Most people know the scripture from John 8 that says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. But what they don't know is what precedes that. And what precedes that is this. Jesus said, if you hold to my teachings or abide in my teachings in some translations, then you are truly my disciples. And then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We don't just know the truth by default. The truth is a process and it comes as we hold to the teachings of Christ, as we abide in his word. The process is the same elsewhere in scripture. We're told not to be conformed any longer to the image of this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And when we do that, then we can know God's will for our lives. That process happens only as we are doing what I often recommend, and I know people are tired of me saying it, but I'm not going to stop saying it, and that is that we saturate our mind with the Word of God. God's Word is the only thing that grows us in our knowledge of Christ, that matures us in our walk with Christ, and is the only way that we can know the truth so that we can walk in the freedom that Christ purchased for us with his own blood on the cross. Nearly every day, in fact, I'm in a conversation with a young woman that I am confident is a sister in Christ, but does not yet have an assurance of her salvation because she has not yet had the time to saturate her mind with the word of God. What she is experiencing is a very typical spiritual battle. She is now filled with fear when she reads the Word of God. She begins to have doubts. What if God doesn't love me? What if Jesus hasn't forgiven me of my sins? What if I haven't prayed right? What if my faith isn't right? And on and on and on. A very typical battle for a new believer. And there is only one way to win this battle. And that is for each of us individually to abide in, read God's word, saturate our minds with his word so that we can know the truth and the truth will set us free from the unnecessary fear the unnecessary anxiety, the unnecessary worry. There's enough worries in this world without worrying about whether or not Jesus loves us, without worrying about whether or not we can lose our salvation. Yes, he loves us, and no, we can't lose our salvation. It is a gift. The Word of God says it is by grace that we are saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, but it is a gift of God and not by works, lest any should boast. And yet this brand new sister is already worried that she's not producing good works. My guess is she's got some legalistic, Torah-keeping, circumcision group, so-called Christian, telling her that she needs to do, 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 do now in order to earn, secure, and deserve her salvation. And I'm going to be honest, I'm sick to death of it. God's word is not given us to condemn us. It's not given to save us. The law was not given to save us. The law was given to lead us to Christ. Read Galatians 3. That was the purpose of the law. It was given so that we would be aware of the fact that we are sinners in need of a Savior. It doesn't have the power to save us. It says, if the law could could save us, then Christ would not have had to come. If righteousness could be gained by keeping the law, then Christ died for nothing. And to the church in Galatia that had added one thing to faith in Christ for salvation, Paul told them they had made Christ of no value at all. 
Salvation is either by grace through faith or it's not at all. If you add works, it's no longer by grace. It's no longer by faith. If you want to try to work your way to heaven, have at it. But I'm here to tell you that you can't. And that is why Jesus came and died on the cross for our sin, to pay our sin debt in full, to pay our way to heaven in full. And again, the law was given to lead us to him. It was supposed to be like a billboard saying, you're a sinner. You need a savior, not do this, do this, do this, and you'll be saved. There is blessing and cursing for keeping or breaking God's law, yes, but not salvation. If salvation could come through keeping the law, then why did Jesus die on a cross for our sin? Why? Tell me. You can direct message me. No, you can't comment on my videos because I'm just one person. And I can't even respond to all the direct messages that I get. But if you're a Torah keeper, if you're a part of the circumcision group, tell me if you can, if you can earn, deserve, and secure your salvation by keeping the law, then why did Jesus have to come and die for your sin? What was the purpose? What was the reason? What value was there in it? We are either saved by what God's Word says, by grace through faith, or we're not saved at all. Will a mature believer in Christ produce good fruit, good works in their lives? Absolutely. If they don't, then they need to question if they are truly saved. If their lives have not changed, since they prayed a prayer, then I would say, what exactly did you pray? Did you just say, oh God, I believe in you. Thank you for saving me. Because I hear that all the time. And James 2 says, you believe there's one God? Great, good, fantastic. The demons believe and shudder. Just a generic belief in God does not save anyone. Almost every religion in the world believes in God, in a God. It is at the name of Jesus that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is the one who hung on a cross for our sins. It is his name. It is him that we have to place our faith in. We have to not just believe that he died and on a cross for our sins and rose again three days later, because even that, most false religions believe that. But do we believe that that was enough? Do we believe that what Jesus did on our half, on our behalf was enough for our salvation, or do we think we've got to be circumcised, baptized, go through catechism, pray, do a bunch of good works, good deeds, keep the law, go to church every Saturday or Sunday, whatever day you believe, and on and on and on. Do we believe that what Jesus did on that cross was enough? Do we believe when he said it is finished that he meant what he said? Do we believe Ephesians 2, 8, and 9? Again, that it's by grace that we're saved through faith and not by works lest any should boast. Do we believe that? Have we placed our faith in what Jesus did on the cross on our behalf? Or are we trusting what we do? Our good works, our good deeds, our fruity lives. What are we trusting in to save us? Because I'm telling you, there are going to be an awful lot of people, according to God's word, that stands before him and say, I did this, I did that. I cast out demons in your name. I performed miracles in your name. And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Not because you didn't do enough good works, but because you thought your good works were just as important as the work that he did on the cross. And that's just the truth. And somebody needs to tell you. And if it's got to be me, then so be it. I'll tell you. Amen.